To put the PD valve to the test, we brought to Shet two Chevy small block heads. For a baseline, we offered up a stock as cast 23 degree head, which Touchette immediately put on his flow bench and tested. Then we asked him to compare that to the Pro Elite CNC ported cast iron head from Racing Head Service. This CNC ported head from RHS is extremely popular among racers competing in classes that require a cast iron head but don't restrict port work. Like the stock head, the Pro Elite is also a 23 degree small block head, but it's been treated to an advanced CNC porting job right from the factory which should really increase flow potential. And to keep things as equal as possible, we chose the version of the Pro Elite with 228 cc runners, a relatively large 69 cc combustion chamber, and straight alignment for the spark plugs, just like the stock head. We decided to test both heads at three identical valve positions, so we began with the intake valve 300 thousandths of an inch off the seat, then repeated the process at 500 thousandths lift and 700 thousandths lift. The first step after setting up the cylinder head and testing equipment on the flow bench is to provide the included software with the baseline information. The first thing the software wants to know is whether you are testing an intake or an exhaust port and which one. Next, you'll be asked for the valve diameter, the stem diameter, and valve lift setting. Once you have that information in the computer, the software will automatically calculate the curtain area, which is the circumference of the valve multiplied by the total lift. The next section allows you to input your correction factor if necessary, which wasn't for our testing. Finally, in the port flow box, the software assumes you'll be testing at the industry standard 28 inches of water for pressure, but you can change it if you do your testing at a different pressure. You will also need to input the percentage of pressure, ours was 90 for this test, and the range, and the software will calculate the CCFM. The CCFM validation box to the right of that compares your average readings to the calculated average derived from the total CFM. This essentially helps you check your work. If the difference field is too large, you know you've gathered contaminated info somewhere. Now you're ready to begin entering your findings. With the pressure differential valve at the correct lift and in the first position, take a pressure reading and input that into the computer. Using the baseline information you've already entered along with the pressure reading, the software instantly provides the CFM and velocity calculations. Then, as you fill in the pressure information for the other positions, the pressure differential valve software begins building the color-coded flow map of the port you see on the right. You can choose to have the circular chart graph either port velocity or CFMs. The first position is at 12 o'clock, and each position moves one spot clockwise until you get all the way to 8, which mirrors the positioning collar that's already installed on the cylinder head. And while you can have either the velocity or CFM numbers posted right beside each position, the graph is also color-coded to help you make a quick visual diagnosis of how the port is behaving. The portion of the chamber with the highest flow coefficient is labeled in red, and the colors change to cooler ranges in the portions with less flow. Once the information has all been entered into the program, having an easy to decipher visual map of what's going on in the chamber can be very enlightening. For example, Here's the map of the stock Chevy head with the valve lifted off the seat 300 thousandths of an inch. The 9 o'clock position you see on the map faces towards the exhaust valve in the combustion chamber. This is usually the highest flowing area in most 23 degree cylinder heads. But notice how the flow doesn't drop off that much between 4 and 9 o'clock. But now look at the same port with the valve 500 thousandths of an inch off the seat. The highest flow portion is still directly across from the exhaust valve but the areas surrounding it haven't increased at nearly the same rate, which you can see because the colors have gone from yellow and orange to blue and gray. And at 700 thousandths lift, there's a big change in the color placement again. This tool allows you to quickly determine that there's a lot of turbulence in the port, and there's a lot of opportunity here for you to make changes that will create some clean flow patterns to pack in more air and fuel into the combustion chamber. Now compare that to the RHS CNC ported 23 degree head. Even at 300 thousandths of an inch of lift, you can see the difference. The airflow is much more evenly distributed all the way around the valve. Now look at the chart at 500 thousandths of an inch of lift. There are still no sections labeled blue or purple like before, and only the 1 o'clock portion is labeled gray. Finally, at 700 thousandths lift, the flow differences are spread out enough to get more color gradations, but the highest flow areas are still at the 9 o'clock through 11 o'clock zones. When the highest flow areas aren't jumping around as the valve opens and closes, that's almost always a good sign of a well-designed port. And this can be proven by looking at the total flow numbers posted for each section. It's also important to note that the way the pressure differential valve software works, 
the color maps aren't tied to each other. In other words, if you're looking at two different ports or two tests on the same port at different valve lifts, you cannot compare the color of one specific section to that same section on another test. In other words, at 700 thousandths lift, the one o'clock section on the unported head has been given a blue label, but that's just related to the percentage of flow around the rest of the valve at that same lift. The same area on the RHS ported head at 700 thousandths lift has a gray label, but that doesn't mean it's actually less efficient than the unported head. In fact, at that lift, the unported head is flowing 20.99 CFM while the RHS ported head is blowing that figure away at 29.92 CFM. So just remember that the color maps are mostly helpful for comparing specific areas of the port at a specific lift. So what did we learn? First of all, the RHS ported head is a serious performer. It flows significantly more air even at low valve lift. At 300 thousandths lift, it flows an additional 13 CFM through the port. That jumps up to 84 CFM at 500 lift and an incredible 111 CFM at 700 thousandths lift. That's because the stock head flatlines after about 500 thousandths valve lift, while the RHS design keeps flowing more and more as the valve lift increases. The result is an amazing 60% increase in total flow at 700 thousandths of an inch of valve lift. And by charting each section of the port using the pressure differential valve, we can see that, for example, RHS has made changes to significantly decrease the shrouding the stockhead suffers from between the valve and the chamber wall. Using the pressure differential valve software, we can quickly see that this is one area where the RHS head really outshines the stock version. But there's no way you can see that by looking only at the total airflow numbers. We can see how the new pressure differential valve can definitely be beneficial to cylinder head specialists. The pressure differential valve is the most reliable way to quickly and easily map exactly how air is moving inside the cylinder head ports and combustion chambers. And we're excited to see how smart engine builders and cylinder head porters will use this in the near future.